No, so let's start with the 4680 sales because that was probably the most consequential thing he said in the conference call was that the Austin assembly line Model Y production was going to use those cells right off the bat, which I've been trying to figure out for like six months. Six months I've been trying to figure this out and they won't give me a straight answer. And I'm like, why would you put like an old cell line next to a new cell line and then start with an old cell line and, and the new cell line probably isn't ready. And then if you start with the new cell line, then it doesn't work. Then you got a stalled assembly line. And then they say, oh, we're building Model Ys with this structural battery pack. We're ready to go. We talk, I saw this all two years ago when I was at Tesla for the battery day. And I think it's the most consequential thing Tesla's done in a long time as far as technology advancement. And when you look at battery technology and you think about the way a current battery pack looks, which is almost like AAA battery, you know, lined up on a big skateboard and you plug all those batteries together. It's kind of a simple idea. You know, the challenge is like getting it all to work and not explode and all that kind of stuff and charge fast. And But like the idea is you put like a lot of batteries on the skateboard and then you charge your car. Okay. And you power your car. Now, if all of a sudden I would replace these AAA batteries that I guess with like fist size batteries, which are like those D batteries, let's say, all of a sudden I need a lot less battery cells to make each car. So it's a lot less expensive and it's more powerful. And I don't need the structural battery pack now. Now it's actually the battery is the pack that saves a lot of cost and weight. And all of a sudden you've got a way better. EV than ever been created, like by seven X. So, so it's, 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 I think it's seven times better, the technology. So when you think about a Rivian or, a, uh, or a, a Lucid car, Lucid has great range on a huge battery pack. So Lucid is a super heavy car with a huge battery pack and huge range and lots of speed, but it is way over batteried. You know, like you don't need 420 miles. You just don't. Okay. Like my plaid, you know, 85 charges, let's say 300 miles, it's plenty. You know, no car I drove before got more than 300 miles when I was driving a gas car. So, you know, so to me, having so many, I think this slows them down. So many cells, such a big battery pack, it really slows down Lucid when you don't really need all that. So then all of a sudden, when you think about the efficiency of seven times fat, better batteries and the power you can drive from the similar size and weight or which would be seven times more or seven times less cells in that car. The cost structure just drops like a stone, you know, and everybody's like, Oh, you know, like shouldn't be Tesla focused on the $25,000 car, which these batteries makes possible. But what Tesla basically said is no, we're not working on this car because we don't need to work on this car. Let somebody else solve that. That's like an Arcimoto thing. You want a cheap EV buy an Arcimoto. Arcimoto's are great. Cheap EVs, $20,000. You got a hundred mile charge, you plug it into your wall. Arca Motors is a great solution for cities. And, and that's why we're an investor. But if you want a car and you want a car that can drive itself and be an amazing vehicle, they're not, they're not using this efficiency to make a cheaper car. What they're going to do is make higher margins and better cars and scale faster because they'll need less battery cells to scale. And so that's how Tesla gets to 2 million, 3 million, 4 million cars a year through battery tech. So this, this is why I bought more Tesla when it was down, more than robots or any of that stuff. It's this, this cell technology is a game changer. And once again, most people just don't understand this. I, I've spent so many hours studying battery technology and I literally don't like it. You know, like, I, I like to invest in companies like Netflix, you know, like I like, I know entertainment I'm in Hollywood, you know, it's like, I can tell you what are good projects, who who's good and bad. That's easy. But when like, there's two areas I'm studying right now, which I hate, but I, I have to know more is battery technology and genetics, you know, and cause we're doing a lot of stuff with uh, uh, Moderna, Pfizer, Abbott, Illumina, Fulgent, you know, like this whole biotech thing. Cause I'm a big believer in what's happening with genetics, but but it's not my favorite topics, you know? So I forced myself to read and learn and I have experts that teach me and, um, and I'm very uh, adaptable. Um, but what I've learned in studying battery technology for what I've studied and from the experts I know is not only is what Elon doing 
in creating bigger, better batteries. But what they've done is they've changed the chemical composition inside the batteries to, to using iron, for example, and the way that they're manufacturing cathodes so that there isn't such a huge demand on, on rare earth, you know, metals and metals that are conflict, you know, areas or expensive. So not only are we getting this size, power and production change, we're also getting chemistry changes, the LFG. So, so when you look at the, the entirety of what's happening here, it's much more massive than what people realize when it comes to the future of electric vehicles and the moat that Tesla has at being the leader in this business.